horrible pronouncement. What's actually being said here? Ephraim was the largest tribe of the ten tribes in the north. God often called Israel Ephraim. And what God is saying here is they've made their choice. They've gotten into bed with the things that they feel made them happy. They don't want my law. All they want is as many sexual partners as they can have to continue to lie, cheat, and steal, to continue to disenfranchise others, to continue to kill their babies. That's who they are. So I've written them off. He says, leave them alone. Now, friends, I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I, I really don't. But I can tell you this. I've read the whole book. And I don't find the United States named anywhere in, in, in Times Prophecy. That's a fact. There are those that make an attempt to take some obscure language and make it sounds like it's talking about the United States. They point out when the scripture talks about the young lions. And they say, oh, that's Canada, the United States, and Australia. No place in the scripture does it say that. It doesn't. There are those who are good Bible scholars that tend that way. You know what? Back to the question that Larry asked, asked me. Are we fundamentalists? I believe the Bible is literal and that it says what it means and it means what it says. I don't see it. I hope it is just simply that God speaks of our nation in a different way and that he does find us worthy. However, when I look at the fact that he has judged other nations according to the same criteria and I look at my own nation and I see that it is doing identically the same things. Friends, I gotta wonder. So you might reasonably ask, who might get, who might get the biggest judgment? Well, I tell you, I'm glad I'm saved and my sins are forgiven past, present, and future. And if you know Jesus, so are yours. But I know I've got to stand before Jesus. And I don't want to look him in the eye and say, Lord, I know I should have invited people to church. I was embarrassed. And I know I should have shared the gospel even if they laughed at me. God, I know that your word was the truth but I knew they had a normalcy bias. And because they had a normalcy bias, I knew they wouldn't listen to me. You know who's the worst person to have to face? When God judges the world through his son Jesus, I don't want to look at all the people I passed up and never said a word as they look at an eternal lake of fire and then turn and look at me and say, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you take a chance? Why didn't you speak up? How will you answer the people that you have contact with in your life when they face you before they step into that eternal lake of fire? Verse 18. Their drink is rebellion. Speaking of Israel. They commit harlotry, prostitution continually. Her rulers dearly love dishonor. In other words, not only do they do these terrible things, they're not even ashamed. They think it's perfectly okay. 
to do all the things that God accuses them of. The wind has wrapped her up in its wings, and they shall be ashamed because of their sacrifices. In other words, you think all this stuff is okay now. You really do. You think it's okay now. A day's going to come when you'll stand face to face with Jesus as judge. And when, they, when you do, you're going to realize that you had it all wrong because you didn't know his word. Friends, we got a responsibility to fill this building for Jesus. We're the ones that are sitting on a lifeboat and the Titanic is about to go down and our friends and our families are in the water and we're the ones holding the life preservers. Throw it out. Give them a chance and if they choose to swim away from the life preserver and drown, you can stand before the captain of your soul and say, Lord, I threw them the gospel. I did what I could. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you so much for this word. Lord God, again, I pray for our nation because I can see our nation so clearly in the words of this rebuke to Israel. And then later to Judah. Father, I pray for the salvation of my country, for its elected officials, for my president, for my Congress, both sides of the aisle, Lord. I pray for their salvation. I pray, Lord God, for the state house, the governor, the state legislature, all those who work in government, Lord God. I pray for those who hold the gospel in silence. Give them divine appointments, Lord God, and cause them to throw the life preserver out. Father, please do in us what's necessary so that we don't come having not loved others the way you loved us. Lord Jesus, you died for us. All you're asking us to do is to point to the cross. Lord God, please bless Israel and let the life preserver be thrown out there as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, as best I know, everybody in this room is a believer. But I would just be remiss if I didn't say, if you don't know Jesus in the way I'm talking about, if you don't need to know Jesus in a way that his word is so real to you that you got to speak up for him. Please don't leave this place without giving me the honor of talking with you a little bit because you can leave knowing him that way. Amen? Amen. Amen. We'll see you back here again at 1.30 Sunday afternoon. And Ask God. Pray. Yeah. Ask Him to give you somebody to bring with you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.